Okay, this is where I'm at now. Uh, pretty much finished with, with the uh, basic construction, as we already know. So the arm would spin back and forth like this. I'm sorry, I just spun it all the way around, but we'd go back and forth. I'll go from top view, like this. Now, back and forth, I guess just to charge it, you do it by hand. And then it would move back and forth by itself after charging. And the reason why I say that is because um, Stefan Marnov, in his description, uh, he, he kind of indicates that. And apparently this is what Paul Bowman had told him. And uh, what it does, uh, like the Zamboni motor, is that when it approaches a polarity, opposite polarity, uh, it carries a charge, let's say positive charge, to this negative uh, polarity. And when it gets there, the charge changes. And then this becomes negative, as well as this, and forces it back this direction as a positive charge. And then when it gets over here, this one's positive, and then it bounces back. And so it would go back and forth like that. Uh, similar to this, the Zamboni uh, motor. Um, in any case, my next step, well, I'm a little baffled about the horseshoe magnet because uh, the uh, replica already has this magnet in place. Now, one does have aluminum foil on it, the other one doesn't. <clears throat> but since it's already in place, why didn't they go ahead and put the coils on it if it had coils? I'm suspecting maybe it doesn't even have coils. That perhaps, uh, now I do suspect, since it doesn't make a full revolution, that there's probably a wire connection to this. Because it, uh, it wouldn't affect, affect it to have a direct connection that way. Um, so I think there might be a wire going from here to the magnet and then from this side over to this side, coil or not. If there's no coil, then perhaps it's disconnected uh, and the energy runs through the magnet this way and then back up to this side and then out here. If I take this off, you can see I put I put a nail in here and on the other side, ran the nail through and made a little loop. Uh, this is how I did this for both sides. This is how I'm going to attach the wire that would come from this, whether it comes from a coil or not. Uh, that's how I'm going to do that. So that's how that works. And I wanted to just quickly show you these pots. I actually, uh, I have the, the, um, the bottom cap and the top caps done now. Uh, the middle of the pots, how I do those might change. So if I take this off, you can see how I have this lined up uh, for the um, for the inside containers. <clears throat> you want to try to cut these as flat as possible, but if you don't, uh, they'll still, uh, because of the ridges, they'll straighten up anyway. Um, I take take the cylinders apart here. I can show you that the bottom half also is lined up accordingly. And uh, this is this might be a little difficult for people to to do it the way I did it, um, but I actually made a mold and uh, casted this mold. And I do have these in place with just a little drop of hot glue because I might need to readjust them at some point. Uh, I haven't fixed it in place just yet. Same with the magnet. I just put a little hot glue in place so it doesn't fall off because uh, I may be adding coils to it. Next I'll be doing the pots. Now the pots, uh, I have made these before and I've made them the way they're, they've been suspected as far as being made, where it was just cylinders with uh, perforated metal in between, 
and um, in any case there's supposed, there's supposed to be a coil down the center and so I was thinking about how to do the coil and I was looking at this book here and it tells you um, basically it tells you how to do the coil uh, in order to make it north, south, south, north um, and then report from uh, Albert Hosser, it seems like this might make a difference. One pot is north to south, the other pot south to north. And uh, so that would determine how the coil is, is going to be wound. So I would have to uh, investigate that and uh, do that appropriately. Seems to be real important the alignment of the uh, magnetic poles of the different parts. So uh, how I'm going to do this is basically the coils in the pots will be lined up, let's say from north to south, and then the little uh, magnetized nail will be north to south, and then the energy would flow through here like this to the magnet, and I'll also probably do like north to south, because that's not the alignment there but you get the idea and then uh, come up here and the same thing on this side uh, north to south it would actually be just the opposite from this whole side north to south to the nail and then the coils will be lined up accordingly as well uh, so in any case just wanted to point that out I believe that that would help the flow of energy perhaps or maybe uh, Maybe not, who knows. In any case, uh, that's how I'm going to arrange this. Okay, real fast, I'm going to go over my, uh, my electrical diagram here real quick. Uh, you can see here the wiring, how I think it might be wired. And uh, this part here, it goes from pot to pot. I believe is this right here. So the pots are connected to it. And uh, these are the pots I have drawn, the horseshoe magnet and the bar. And so what I think might be happening is like I have L and H as are like low and high pressure. Um, I think the coil in the center of these pots are for would be like the low pressure, like an atmosphere. And the outside of the pot, uh, which would, would be the capacitors, is more like a high pressure, like high voltage capacitors. And um, so I, I believe this is how uh, the machine is able to create a current uh, through here across the little nail um, and create a polarity. with without the bar or the nail actually touching the electrode. It's because of the high and low pressure. Uh, in any case, so what would happen here is when this bar moves back and forth, uh, you have this low and high pressure going